uh, at the moment, I'm gonna get ready. We're gonna get Scotta into voice and we're gonna go and do a quick and dirty rundown of every single coal boat. We're not gonna dwell on any of the boats, but we're gonna talk about them briefly and advertise, not advertise, but kind of describe uh, a little bit about their capabilities. I'm not gonna say this is a good boat, this is a bad boat for every single boat. I might say, I like this boat, or this is a good boat. We're gonna primarily talk about what it is that makes those boats special. I'm certain that we'll have some opinions fly in a little bit here as well. So if you're kind of interested in that, um, we'd love to have you stick around. Obviously, uh, we'll have chat rolling on the side as well. If you guys have comments, uh, we'll keep our eyes open for those and try to respond as best we can. Um, there are a lot of coal boats, and so we're gonna try to do this uh, relatively quickly. Yeah, it's a good time to be thinking about this. We're gonna have um, we're gonna have coupons coming back here fairly shortly. We'll take a look at these briefly. So 43 days uh, for our next coupon. So if you still have this coupon, you should try to spend it here in the next 43 days. Um, and of course, if you're looking for doubloon chips, now's a good time for that as well. Um, okay, so the way we, I normally do this by myself, but I thought it'd be fun to pull Scott in here, partly because like we talked earlier in the stream, we've got contrasting opinions, right? Um, so we'll start with the low tier ships and we're gonna go pretty quickly. Um, I'll start off with Campbelltown. Uh, Campbelltown's a tier three premium destroyer. Uh, one of the things that makes it special is its damage is really high on its torpedoes for the tier. It's like 16,000 damage torpedoes. Uh, they do have a seven and a half kilometer range, which at tier three is pretty good. Uh, it's got a cool camo. It's a real ship. The Americans gave to the British has a really interesting story about how they used it to destroy a, a French uh, dry dock that was captured by the, the Germans. Um, and that was used to um, prevent them from using Tirpitz and Bismarck more aggressively during the war. So there's cool history around this ship. I think she's a good looking boat and worth getting. Um, Scott, I, I don't know, what do you think about Campbelltown? Obviously it's a tier three, so not everybody's gonna rush I, out to get it. Yeah, I think, Cam I do not have time to say about Campbelltown. I think it's cool. Um, I think if you're saving for coal and you're gonna buy your first coal boat, um, you can also buy Campbelltown for like 1900 dubs. So I, if you really want a Campbelltown, I might use real money for it, not coal. That's a good point too. Like getting a coal, if it's your first coal boat ever, getting a coal ship that's maybe like tier five or higher to get yeah. a better benefit out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would, I would, if you're getting, my first coal boat was a tier five back in the day. It was like October Ski Revolution. So I, I think that's the right tier to start it. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I'm going to move the chat browser over here so it doesn't cover up as much of the details. Um, so next up is Ubari. Now I'm a weird Ubari fanboy, but I have to admit this is not the strongest boat. Um, I like it. The guns are incredibly accurate, but you've just got the two turrets, uh, one front, one back. Um, and that is, uh, and, and the range is pretty short. You do have a Citadel, you're gonna get slapped around in it, but it can be a really fun boat. Uh, I think for most players, Ubari is kind of a tough boat to play, so I wouldn't recommend it. It used to be really strong with AA and it has a defensive AA module at low tier, uh, but it just doesn't feel as powerful as it used to before uh, some of the CV buffs we've seen in recent months. Um, your thoughts, man? Uh, I think Ubari at this point in the game has kind of a high skill floor. Right. Yeah, agreed. I, I wouldn't get it if you're, I mean, I, I know we can take it out. I Last time I took it out, I had a nice time in it. Um, but when I, you know, two years ago, I would have hated it because I wouldn't have been able to play the concept. Right, to, to handle the staying hidden as much as you need to, which is kind of hard in a cruiser for sure. So that's Ubari. Um, the, the torp angles on it are really, really narrow. Um, and so you have to be like super broadside to launch the torps. You will not dive out around an island and torpedo anybody. Um, and they only go like six kilometers. So she's not like a torpedo boat either. So be aware this is about starting fires, providing AA support. Um, and then you really got to be good with a rudder. Like Scotta says, I think the the skill floor on it's pretty high. So that's you barring. Just to uh, break in really quick. Did you skip Charleston? Oh, did I? Oh no, Charleston, I don't have yet. It's at the top. Let's go get oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, Thank you. I did yeah, no worries. Yeah, do you, why don't you take this one? Talk about Charleston. Uh Charleston again, I Charleston's fun. I, I think when I started the game it was one of those things where I had a new like a new player code and I think it gave me Charleston. Yes, um, they or, gave this one away to a lot of players. Yeah. yeah, and and it's 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 a premium version of the St. Louis. Um, it's fun at tier three. It's got a lot of guns. It's one of those protected cruisers that has like a million guns that shoot and do stuff. So it's kind of fun. Um, it's got a much lower skill floor than Ubari does, in my opinion. Yeah, agree. And it does point out here that it is a St. Louis class cruiser. Here's something that's interesting. I'm going to show you guys about St. Louis if I own this cruiser still. 
which I don't think people know, which is interesting. St. Louis, here it is. If you go to the armor layout on St. Louis and you peel away all of this stuff, you realize that it has a turtle back at tier three. So if you've ever played and you've tried to Citadel at St. Louis or at Charleston for that matter, um, it's hard to do because it's got this turtle back on top. So this is 76 millimeter armor, that's 51 millimeter armor. And then it wraps that up with another 13 mil with 102, or excuse me, 102 millimeters on the outside here. So if you, can, if you do this, it's really, really hard to Citadel in St. Louis because it has way advanced armor. And uh, Charleston's gonna share that same, cap uh, that same armor profile. Scourge of all bogatiers confirmed. <laughs> exactly. Because a lot of the battleship turrets at that tier are like 305s, right? And so like anything you're going to bump into or tier four even. Um, okay, I did skip Charleston. Is that the only other tier three? On my list, yeah. It's Charles. Charleston's really cheap too. It's, it's only 15,000 coal. That's like what a it's premium a module, module costs, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so that one's super cheap in coal. I'm sure you can buy it for similar to what Campbellton costs in real money as well. Yeah, I think that's probably true. So Charleston's one of those ones that I keep thinking about buying just to get off of that list at the top. So I just let's get this out of my way because it's so cheap, but I keep not doing it because there's always something interesting to buy with coal. Um, but yeah, for, for a new player, you know, if, if you've got some coal or like you say, even a couple of doubloons and you're like, I kind of want a premium. Um, tier three premiums aren't gonna be ships that you're gonna play long-term, you know, for, for new players. You won't probably come down and play tier three a lot. But I, as I've said a lot of times, it's nice to have a lower tier premium because if you're ever going to introduce people to the game and you have to go down there and play low, low tier games with them, why not take a premium? You know, so it's good to have a couple in your inventory. Okay, uh, Marblehead is one of the many Omahas in this game. Um, bad AA, uh, decent HE, decent AP when you're up close, but being up close, the armor is tough on an Omaha. Uh, Marblehead's real party trick is the torpedoes. I think they have like a 40 second reload or something, and they go eight kilometers. Uh, so you're gonna always have torpedoes available, but uh, those eight kilometer torpedoes can get you into a dangerous position. Uh, yeah, it says 8.2 kilometers, 38 seconds. Um, Marblehead's very much about dancing and avoiding incoming fire. It's another skill that you're going to need. Um, Scott, any Marblehead thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if you really like Omaha and you want long range torpedoes and you want an American cruiser at tier five, Marblehead. <laughs> That's the one. Does it also have like less guns than Omaha or something? Like, isn't it missing some turrets or, or uh, this different one, guns? I think this I one has remember. all the guns. Murmansk is, or is that Murmansk? missing two okay. guns because Murmansk is a little bit more powerful. No, that's all good. There's enough of these Omahas, it's kind of confusing. This was one of my first premiums ever. Uh, they gave it away as a gift ship at Penny Arcade Expo way back in 2009, right? So like, uh, if or not 2009, 2015 or whatever. 2015 um, probably. Yeah, 2015. So like a lot of people had this boat back then, but like I said, it's I don't know that I'd rush out to get a Marblehead, but if you like US cruisers and you're looking for a captain trainer at low mid tier, um, it's not the worst pick uh, you could get, obviously, if you chose. I don't know if there's a better US pick, uh, cruiser, but anyway, that's Marblehead. Um, the Hill. Scott, uh, tell us about Hill. I think we both like Hill. Hill was introduced back um, when they brought Venom into the game during the first iteration of the, uh, of the you know, water world scourge of the seas, rusty boat yeah, event. Yeah, rusty Hill boat. was the Hill was the more obtainable of the two boats in that event uh, versus Venom. But um, Hill's fun. Um, you know, it's it's got kind of shortish range torpedoes, if I remember right, but they reload relatively quickly, and it's got a lot of guns. It's it's fun to play. Yeah, really high gun DPM. Um, if you like gunboat destroyers, um, this one is pretty fun, pretty easy to do. I think you're right about the torps. I want to say they're five fives or five O's. They're really short, but it does have three launchers in that kind of triangular configuration they just showed here. One, two, three. Um, I think it's three. It might be four. Anyway, uh, but yeah, good gunboat destroyer. You're going to lean mostly on the... Uh, on the guns um, th and for players of like soviet destroyers um, this this boat feels kind of like a soviet destroyer in that way so anyway hill's really good definitely i, th I think it's a, a worthwhile ship to get if you like that kind of play and it's only thirty-eight thousand coal uh, which is pretty affordable for a tier five even i think only marblehead is cheaper so that's uh that's hill for us 
Anshan is a Pan-Asian Destroyer. This one came out before the Pan-Asian Destroyer line, and it plays more like a Russian DD, but with eight click torps. So if you like Nevni's guns, uh, then you'll like Anshan's guns. Um, it's pretty tough. Uh, the guns hit pretty well. I think they're 130s. Yeah, it says 130 millimeter guns here. Um, the two three-pack torp launchers that are six, or I'm sorry, eight kilometers. Um, they're not deep water torps. They're just regular torps. Um, so it, it's very much a Russian DD on the Anshan tree or on the Pan Asian tree um, with eight click torps. Uh, I, she's not particularly special, but because of this ship is so old, she's pretty cheap. So it's only 40,000 coal with a coupon comes down to 30k. Pretty good for that, but uh, there's just not a lot of. Uh, maybe now with the Pan Asian cruisers, this makes a better captain trainer. I don't know. What do you think about buying Anshan? How does that help folks with um, captain training and stuff like that? I think, um, you know, if you're looking for premium Pan Asians, now that there's more ships there, right? There's two lines. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that helps. But, you know, Anshan, as far as like the, you know, it's a good tier six premium destroyer, right? I mean, it, the concealment's. What's it like six six one? I think it's about the same as Nevni, but um, it's got the goodness of those larger guns um, with actual usable torpedoes, unlike uh, Nevni. So, and it's fast. If I remember right, Anshan gets around. It moves. It handles um, reasonably well. I remember. Was it like tier six brawls or tier six clans? Like people are using Anshan quite a bit because it's pretty strong, uh, which is a lot of times what you get with older uh, premiums. Yeah, the concealment I just double checked was six point three. So not too bad. Um, better than you know, you know some of the boats that we see at that tier that are six eight, or you know six six, right? So uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty aggressive boat in terms of like being able to beat up on other destroyers. Uh, it's just toast. The, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say also in regards to the the tier stuff. I think you might have more of a uh, maybe a renaissance for the Pan Asian DD Tech Tree line too now that Shenyang and. Chengmu and Yu Yang are getting Torp Reload Booster. I think that's going to improve their people. They're going to want to try those and play those if they don't have them already, maybe, because I think that makes those ships better. It, it um, definitely does, yeah. And so you might have a, a want for a premium destroyer while you're working that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think Anshan is, it, like you said, when they added the cruiser line, it became more valuable because now you got more captains to train and stuff like that. When it was just the DD line, it was a little bit hard to sell Anshan to folks. Um, it's just Toast comments that it was popular in the tier six clan battle season. I think that's true. Uh, Big Data says Anshan's one of my favorite ships, right? So there's definitely some love for this boat out there. Um, one of my first premiums that I paid money for was Anshan. And now it's really cheap from for doubloons too. So if you're looking at this and you're like, well, I could get Anshan or I could get, you know, Eagle or something, and I want to get both. Um, I think Anshan's cheaper in terms of doubloons. So you might want to check doubloon prices. And that's a typical thing. When we see these older boats, they, their prices come down in the premium shop. Either that or there's in increases on prices for new boats. You can you know, let your mileage, uh, let your heart be your guide on that one or whatever. But anyway, that, that's Anshan. Uh, she's she's probably worth getting and more worth it now. And I like your comment about the the boost to the DD line. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, but yeah, them getting reload boosters is going to make people look at that line, give it a second look. I think that's worth it. Yeah, we both already love Chung Mu, and yeah, I don't yeah. Know, this is the coal boat talk, but that's going to make that boat that much better. Agreed. Yeah, I think Chengdu is really strong. And Shenyang is for that matter as well. But, um, Kirov is a tier five Russian cruiser, 180 millimeter guns on this thing, which is really, really good at tier five. Um, high velocity too, so the arcs are really flat. What Kirov does not have is uh, an unreasonably high amount of armor. Um, so, you know, you're gonna still need to be careful. All of these tier five, tier six cruisers will pop. This one, of course, being a tier five, but great guns on the Kirov. Uh, and of course, of the of the kind of mid-tier Russian ships, I like this one better than uh, Katovsky, and which might even be a six. I can't remember. Um, Kirov thoughts? Anything about Kirov? Uh, Kirov, the former Tech Tree Tier Five before the line split, was replaced by Katovsky as Tier Five on the line. Um, oh, Kirov's okay. interesting in this pricing list too. If you look, it's forty-three thousand coal, and it's a Tier Five, so it costs more than Anshan. Um, which is a tier six destroyer. That's not super weird, but look how much different it costs than Marblehead, right? Uh, it's it's yeah, all, it's nine thousand yeah. coal more. Uh, Kirov's guns are uh, overpowered uh, almost at this level. You can you can do a lot with the AP and the HE is really good. The arcs are flat. If you're 
if you're a guy that's like, man, I, this is one thing we've told new people when they join our clan. Um, just being in a North America player, a lot of new members when they like join are going to play American ships or United States ships are going to play cruisers. And then they're going to get frustrated with, uh, with the guns a lot of times. And I know I've directed new players in our clan like, hey, go play the Russians when you're first learning cruisers because you get rail guns with flat arcs and it's easier to point and click and aim. And so uh, Kirov's a great entry point for that for a trainer. Um, like you said, it's a tier five cruiser, so it's going to explode if a battleship looks at it sideways. But um, Kirov's a good boat. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> I just realized Warsythe points out I still have Clive Cooks live in the title. I, I definitely did not get everything patched. Yeah, Kirov is Kirov's good. I will say when it was a tech tree boat was the first time I played it. And it was really frustrating to me because I was a relatively new player at that time. Um, I think it was the fourth nation in the game. We had US, Japan, Germany, and Russia at that point. And I had a really hard time with the glass cannon concept of the Kirov. So I think for new players who are used to being able to take a hit in say battleships or something, this is tricky to learn. Uh, but if you can learn how to do it with something like Kirov, um, when you get to the high tier play, and, and especially when you're getting to clan battles play, stuff like that, where uh, people are going to be very coordinatedly trying to kill you via citadels. Uh, learning how to do that at tier five is going to help you for, for future play. So Kirov and other ships like it are good, uh, good ships for teaching you how to protect your citadel. Yeah. And um, if you're not allergic, uh, if you're not allergic to co-ops and you use co-ops to farm things, Kirov's really good for farming oh. citadels. I use Kirov to farm citadels for missions all the time. <laughs> That's yeah, a good she's point. really good at that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll either do, uh, you know, I'll bounce between like Kirov and Des Moines and, you know, stuff like yeah. that. I'll, I'll just mix in a few of those high, high cities. Yeah, yeah. D I, you know, Des Moines and Salem and those are great for that. But it's really funny how good Kirov is at that if you have it and it's something you need. Farm yeah. Citadels for some dockyard mission or something. Absolutely. Uh, Tater Dog says Kirov is great at tier yeah. six. And that's what's great is it's a tier five. So it's, it's murder in tier sixes. Like, that's a very good boat. Okay. Uh, Gallant is a British destroyer. This one came out ahead of the British DD line. Um, and it's a it's actually a good little boat too. Uh, negative to it is it has like zero AA. Um, it is not good at shooting down airplanes at all, uh, but it does do the ripple fire, ripple fire torpedoes. Um, and the guns are reasonable on it. Uh, they're not gonna tear anything up, but they're pretty good with, for scrapping at other DDs. Um, that's kind of my take on Gallant. It's fine. And and, and again, for a British uh, trainer, 48,000 coal. If you use a coupon, it's 36. She's not too shabby um, in that way. I don't know how much experience or, or opinion you've got on Gallant, Scott, but I'll give you a chance to. Uh, Gallant has really good concealment, and it has a guy with a Wembley on the deck doing AA, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, all I would say other uh, that I would add about Gallant is it's no jury yet. It is definitely not. It's green is the big difference. I really like the camo on the gallon as well, too. It's a good looking ship if aesthetics are important at all, you know, which in some cases they are and in some cases they aren't. But I, I kind of like yeah, the way she looks. Anyway, so that's gallant. After that comes Eagle, which is like uh, the French destroyer that came out before the French line. Um, it's got a really cool camouflage, 139 millimeter. Yeah, 139s for the guns. Um, she's very fast. She has terrible concealment. I want to say it's 68 or 66. Um, eight kilometer torpedoes, uh, decent smoke, 81 seconds, it says here. Uh, this was very popular in tier six clan battles as kind of a junior mint Kleber, right? Um, I don't know. Eagle's pretty good. I sometimes struggle to be effective with it in randoms, but I think in coordinated play like clans or ranked, it can be a pretty, uh, pretty decent ship. Yeah, Eagle's weird because it's not, you know, it's one of the one of those that came in before the line. So it's not like the line, right? Because it has smoke. Um, right. And right. the other thing that's cool about it is it's torpedoes hit like a truck. They're yeah. slow. They're like super slow, but they do a lot of damage. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Eagle's a pretty good boat if you're looking for, you know, if you if you're transitioning into French destroyer play, uh, it may not be the best because you still have smoke, and so that is a crutch that you don't get on the mm. mainland. But it's a good boat. Yeah, yeah. That smoke will get you out of a dangerous situation from time to time. A bit, again, about forty nine thousand five hundred coal, so more than Kirov, right? More than Gallant, uh, but not a ton more. 
Uh, Bliskawika has been around forever and ever and ever. Um, this is a very old boat, and it used to be in a country called Poland because it, it's a Polish ship in real life, and then they moved it into the Pan-Euro line when they decided to blow out that Pan-Euro line and make it a bigger uh, a bigger deal. Bliz is kind of an interesting boat. She has seven guns, uh, three two two gun turrets got two out back right there and then one more up front with a single turret uh to the front the the guns are actually pretty good the speed is pretty good at 39 knots um and the hp pool it says here is impressive for a destroyer i don't know if it's impressive as 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 impressive now as it was when they first made it but it's still pretty good um i think it's fine but you've got to work with the concept of being spotted because it has a little bit of speed um it's going to work out for people who are comfortable with that kind of gunboat play uh, but i do think there are boats like uh, leningrad that probably do this trick better uh, leningrad also has long smokes as well um, these have eight kilometer torpedoes so does leningrad uh, this does have more guns than leningrad though so I, I think i could see these two kind of scrapping for being um which one people like better but again it, for me leningrad's got more speed it's got uh, flatter gun arcs and uh, bigger guns too, right? These are 120s on here. So, uh, you know, Blizz is okay, but I think Power Creep has, has taken some of its capabilities away, unfortunately. Um, but I still think, you know, if, if you're interested in having a, a Pan-Asian premium, you can throw that into the old port. Um, Blizz thoughts from you, Scott? Um, you should just read Heavy McD's comments in chat and replace his comments with mine for this segment. Okay, Scotta via Heavy says, burrito, 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 burrito. And then he says, five out of five, best boat. <laughs> yeah. I, I hate the concealment on this boat. It's hard um, to work with. It, this is one of those boats that old timers are like, this boat is so great. And that's because their favorite story about it is stealth firing that you haven't been able to do yeah. since like 2017. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and Blizz, again, it's got great guns, it's got decent torpedoes, it can take a hit. Um, but it does come from an era where 6.8 kilometer concealment on destroyers was common. That was that was normal. So you had like six kilometer t destroyers. Yeah, like Mahan. Eights. Yeah, but and like Mahan used to be six four, six eight, right? And and I think still is six four. But um, but six eight was not unheard of. You know, Sims, which you know is is another premium, six eight, right? Which I think is now six six. Um, and probably always was. My memory is getting f foggy these days. But like that was more common, right? And so Blizz wasn't that out of norm, but now it's just concealment so much better than it used to be. So um, it does make that part a little bit tough. But it's, I still think she's got fun guns and stuff. And, and my win rate in Blizz is like 75% or something. Like it's absurdly high. But a lot of those games are from back when you could stealth fire with it and do all the horrible things that um, you used to be able to do with this bow. Um, Down River Rick says, back in the stealth firing days, she was untouchable. Now she's solid, but nothing spectacular. I think that is probably the best review we can give to Blizz. And I've spent too much time on this boat already. We're trying to move fast. Uh, Oktoberski Revolutia. Skara, your first coal boat, you said? Why don't you tell I, us about yeah, it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm surprised. I didn't know, realize she was still on the list. Back then, the coal boat list, I think, was five deep. Yeah, it was um, really, really short when they. Yeah, this that. is this was this is another one of those ones, right? There wasn't this like the first or maybe the second premium Russian. I bet Imperador Nikolai was in the game. Nikolai as was out well. first, I think, but this was. But this was this, this was, was like in. Yeah, this was like in before the Russian battleship line, I think, and then the Russian battleship line came in, and I think Piotr Velikelli at tier five and the Tech Tree is a better ship, but. Um, October Ski's got a bunch of guns and a weird, weird slow turret layout. She's not bad. Like if you're looking for a, again, this is like if you're looking for a tier five captain trainer. I don't know if that's something people do. I think for newer players that don't have the wealth of resources that somebody has who's been playing for like five years, this boat is a really good value proposition. I think when we look back at it, we're like, I don't know why I would buy that now right because we have all these other resources and things but i can tell you from i've got a 300 game eu account i would love to have an october ski over there <laughs> like just because <laughs> that would help me with captain training and stuff whereas on my na account if a new version of october ski if a new tier 5 russian bb came out and it wasn't special in some ridiculous way i could pass on it but i think for newer players these are viable choices 
for mm -hmm. the reasons that we picked them up back in the day. Uh, this ship has the claim to fame of being the first ship to bring out the limited damage control party. So the fast damage control team, where I think this reloads in like 30 seconds, but you have a limited yeah. number of uses of it. That's, this was the first boat to do that. It just has really small guns now, and, and that's a feature of everything. Are they 305s or something? Yeah, they're 305s. So like, yeah. it's a feature of a lot of ships in game, obviously, is battleship gun caliber keeps creeping up. But mm -hmm. like Pewter Velikelli at tier 5 has like huge guns on the tech tree, so... Um, this yeah. just feels bad in that regard. No, those 305s, still, they'll still destroy Omaha's left and right, so you got that going for you. And it does have 12 guns, I think, right? It's four turrets of yeah. three barrels, right? Yeah. So, like, if you... The trouble is to get them all on a target, you've got to open up a pretty good broadside, but if that target is an Omaha, freaking go for it, right? Like, <laughs> go hard, right? So, anyway, that's October Ski. Um, not a bad boat. Has some cool camos for it, too, uh, if, uh, if you're seeking wacky camos. There's a crazy super Soviet-looking one. Lazo, Lazo, Lazo. I'll uh, I'll start off by saying I love Lazo, and so this will not be opinion free. Lazo is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with the shores, um, and uh, and Lazo is just really, really a, a super shores, if you will. So she's a, a twelve gun destroy, or twelve gun cruiser, excuse me, one hundred fifty two millimeter guns. So she's an HE spammer with decent range, and then she has this party trick, which is the rapid takeoff spotting plane. I don't remember exactly how long it lasts, something like a couple of minutes, and then it, there's only a 10 second cooldown before you can launch your spotter plane again. So Lazo can sit out at like 17, 18 kilometers and spam fire on tier nine battleships all game. Um, it does get citadel very easily, and if you've watched me play it, you've seen me get citadel in it. It happens pretty much every game, <laughs> but uh, I love the Lazo, and I think it's a really capable boat. This is one of the first coal boats that I got on my EU account. In fact, it might be the first coal boat, because I knew I could use it to train my Russian destroyer and cruiser captains. Um, and so I'm using it for that purpose over there, and it, it's a good little credit grinder. Now that we're up to tier 7, you can earn some credits uh, pretty well with some of these coal boats. Scott, what do you think about Lazo, and where does it fit into your port in terms of, you know, preference and enjoyability? Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I'm not as hard over on Russian cruisers as you, but I love Lazo. I, I, yeah. I don't have a lot of Krakens in this game, but I do have a Lazo Kraken, and it was from, you know, burning people down at 18, 17, 18, and, and being an annoying uh, jerk. It's a, it's probably the first premium that we've hit on this list that I would tell somebody to they should get like go get this with coal i think i understand why somebody when they get and i, I did the same thing you know you get up to about fifty thousand coal when you're a new player that takes a while yeah it um does. You, you don't have as many opportunities to get coal and it, it's not necessarily as easy but but i think lazo like you look at the cost difference between kirov at tier 5 forty-three thousand coal and lazo at tier 7 for 83 and that's a big uh chunk um but um Lazo is really good. Lazo is going to get you into that matchmaking where you're where you're going to play, you know, nines. Um, but Lazo, yeah. uh, Lazo does OK in that matchmaking because of the range and, and the ability to light those fires. So um, it's not uh, it's not necessarily punished any more than anything else at that tier. But it's a good boat. Yeah. And I, I know I said at the beginning of this, you know, we're not going to or I'm going to try to not be like, rec this is a recommend boat, this is a not recommend boat, but I like your comment where you said this is the first boat that it, it's an easy recommendation to a pretty wide variety of players, right? Yeah, you, you said you weren't going to do that. So you, I, I mean, and I knew I was going <laughs> to. Uh, White Coat says Tier 7 Smolensk. I mean, kind of. It's, it's not quite as abusively HE spammy as a Smolensk, but you're going to use similar tactics from range instead of from smoke, right? Smolensk does that from the safety of smoke. Uh, Lazo is going to do that from range. So it's going to learn you some skills about uh, dodging incoming fire, stuff like that. Um, Toast says not exactly, and I think that's probably a, a fair statement as well. Um, so it's kind of a fun boat. We're, I've seen uh, Ilar is here, and he's relating it to the Chapayev, right? Which I can see that relationship as well. So sort of a Shores Chapayev Smolensk. So like, there's a bunch of stuff in there um, that this boat is similar to. So we've probably spent a little too much time on it. I will comment that you can run Acoustics or Turbo AA um, as well, which is a nice swap ability on this boat. And again, for for 83,000 coal, use your, your coupon. I think it comes down into the 60s. It winds up being pretty affordable. Um, so Lazo, uh, good boat. I think that's a, a solid pick. It's not quite like Yoshino white coat because Yoshino's got 305s, right? Which means the, the pen is there. Lazo's still working with 152s, so not quite gonna fit into that Yoshino thing. But the range stuff is similar. The play style is not too dissimilar. 
Um, Duke of York. Scott, do you want to open us up on a Duke of York discussion? Sure. Duke of York is a premium version of KGB. Uh, I think its primary difference is that it has hydros. I can't remember. We always get these confused. Like if Duke of York has like, I, th- I feel like Duke of York's, York has like short fuse AP. So I think it's AP arms quicker. Um, uh, what does it say in here? It says the ship is armed with special HE shells that have increased damage and improved AP ar- armor penetration capabilities. Uh, but it says the AP shells are less efficient. So maybe this one, okay. I think, I think, I think it's uh, um, probably getting that confused with Yukon or something else then. Or, and you, but anyway, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's. Um, I like Duke of York for what it is. I I don't I don't know if you're if you're if you're looking for that mid tier captain trainer for British, you're a battleship player. It doesn't bring a lot of variety if you're working that line, other than having hydros. I mean, because it's just a carbon copy of KGV at the same tier. So this is this is back from an era where you'd get premiums that were carbon copies that were at the same tier. Nowadays, wargaming when they do that, they tend to either up tier the carbon copy or down tier it, um, like you saw with the Maya match uh, we played earlier today. And so, um, right. But right. but you know, for hundred hundred thousand coal, um, you look at the price on it compared to. Um, you know, some of the other availabilities. Um, I, I think it's pretty good. It just, yeah, you, you you'd have to have that need. You'd want to have to play it. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, when this boat came out, we were looking at three British battleships at tier seven that all came out within a few months of each other, or maybe even in the same month. We had Hood, we had Duke of York, and we had Nelson come out. And they all were available for different things, like Hood and Duke of York at the time you could get for a mission, and then Nelson was a free XP boat. Um, all of these boats bring something special, but not everything. So Hood has really good uh, AA, it's rocket AA, and it's got the uh, improved AP pen angles and things. Duke of York brings the uh, apparently something special about the HE's improved uh, armor pen, which I didn't realize. Um, but it also has the acoustics, which is kind of nice, if, especially if you wind up solo against a, a destroyer somehow. And then, of course, um, Nelson brings the uh, HE spamming and super heal right to the table. And so Duke of York, for most people, was probably the middle ship. I think most people like it a little bit better than the Hood, and they liked the Nelson the best. Uh, I like the Hood quite a bit. Hood's only available for dubs, as far as I know. Um, But Duke of York is pretty good, and I like the acoustics when you're doing maybe Tier 7 ranked. If you're wanting to run uh, kind of a British-style battleship in there, uh, if you wind up on your own, those acoustics are going to help you solo a DD or something. That said, if you've got another ship that you're more comfortable in, you might just lean that direction, right? And maybe you really like Sharnhorst and you're willing to give up the acoustics to go that route, something like that. Um, as far as I was just going to throw out there, no, too, ahead, as, yeah. far as, as far as coal only goes, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of options at tier seven for premium British battleships. You can't get Nelson anymore. I know they just recently sold no. it in the in the auction, um, but they did announce uh, Collingwood, which um, is coming down the pipe. Um, mm. And that's another tier seven premium that's battleship. Uh, that's that looks a lot like Nelson, but has um, the guns are different or something, right? So, so yeah. again, there's going to be options. So that made I don't I don't know what I don't think they've announced the currency for that boat. I'm just going to assume it's going to be doubloons. But um, mm. again, you're going to have options there if you want a battle cruiser, if you want <clears throat> a more something more like the line, if you want something a little more different. I think there's a lot of options there. Tier seven. It just depends on what currency you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that Collingwood has the same turret layout as Nelson, but fewer guns and bigger ones. Yeah, I think maybe I can't remember the details, but. Um, yeah, so we'll see what that comes out for. I think you'll probably be right. That's probably going to be a dub's boat. Um, but again, Duke is available. The cool thing about Duke is it's free, right? None of those other boats are free anymore, uh, assuming Collingwood comes out for uh, for doubloons. And so Duke of York, for the price, is, is pretty good. And again, 100,000 coal. Use a 25% off coupon. You're looking at 75,000 coal-ish, and you'll be in really good shape. <laughs> Uh, Duke's gun range is something like 16 kilometers. I see It's Just Toast says, uh, for the playstyle long range HE spanning, the Hydro uh, is not a nice trade uh, while giving up the DPM, right? Um, and I, I get that. I think that's fair, right? And, and you got to look into those kinds of things, especially if you're going to be a numbers-driven player that way, looking for the most meta ship. Um, 
But yeah, I think Duke is, is serviceable. You can make it work. And again, the price is right. We'll go on to Flint. They're calling it Flint, the Steel Legend. This boat was originally available for steel or special ranking out tokens or something. I can't remember initially. I think you had to rank out and get like molybdenum. And then it was available for steel for a while. And now it's finally available for coal. Uh, and that's why it's so expensive. You're looking at this going, why is the Flint, a tier seven cruiser, 70,000 XP more than Duke of York? Well, because it, because of its origins in the game. Um, Flint's pretty powerful in terms of uh, being kind of an Atlanta that doesn't have radar, does have acoustics, and longer range torpedoes. Scott, I know this is a boat that you really have a good time playing. What is it about the Flint that kind of uh, makes it fun for you? Uh, I like Flint. Um, I, it's another one of the, now that I'm going through this list, I don't have a lot of Krakens in the game, but I've had a Kraken in Flint, but that's because it's kind of a dirtbag boat. <laughs> um, at tier seven, it, it, it's a, you know, this was a, a rarity. If you, if you're playing the new Pan Asian line and you have Chumfon, Chumfon, I don't know, we just pronounced it wrong, but that is Flint. People go, oh, that's Atlanta. Well, if you, it's actually Flint, it's the same turret layout it's as Flint. It's more like Flint. Um, yeah. it's, it's very much the, the, uh, the same as Flint in regards to the turret layout, right? So this Flint and Chumfon have less turrets than Atlanta. Um, but, uh, what I like about Flint, um, or the torpedo like you have smoke which is great it has hydros to protect you in the smoke at least from getting smoked out or torped out of your smoke um and it has like 9.2 kilometer benson torps i love whenever you find a premium ship in the game where they've stuffed benson torps on it not it not on the benson right there's a few yeah. american premiums that have the, those it's the the claim to fame of the benson is that they had these great torps that we could put on everything else yeah it totally <laughs> is and so i i know before shumfan you know if you talk about the pan asian cruisers and the play style the people talk about a lot how you light fires and you kite away and that's the best games I've ever had in Flint were kiting away, yeah. chucking those torps behind me in alleys. And then uh, when I got a good amount of distance or people were scared from chasing, then you could pop smoke and farm uh, with HE. And so Flint's a I just like Flint that way. But again, I think I think Flint kind of has a, a higher it has a higher skill floor um, just because of how uh, tender uh, those ultra light cruisers are uh, yeah. and you get that tier nine matchmaking. But even, you know, tier five battleships are can punish uh, those light cruisers. And in a way, you know, Flint, because it has comparing it against Atlanta for a moment, right? Um, comparing it against Atlanta, that smoke makes it a little a little safer. Hopefully you're using that smoke to get damage, right? Rather than to use you don't want to waste your smoke saving your bacon. That's a less efficient use of your smoke. You want to use that smoke to do something aggressive to help you get more damage, help your team win, help your team take a cap. Um, and so Flint provides that opportunity, which Atlanta doesn't have. So in some ways, it's a little bit easier to play than, say, something like Atlanta. But like you said, that skill floor, I think, on both those ships is higher than on something a little more uh, basic in terms of toolkit. Um, but Flint is great. I definitely recommend this boat for sure. If you're going to buy a Flint, it starts to be expensive enough here, 168,000 coal, that it is worth considering uh grabbing a coupon for that one right uh 25 off of this let me see how good my math is 10 percent is going to be almost 17k so you're going to save something like 40,000 uh coals um if you buy the flint with yeah coupon. did they change that so you can use the coupon on the steel legends now I, I know when they first came out you couldn't that's a good question if anybody doesn't have the flint can check that for us in chat um, if you can use your coupon, I recommend doing it. That's a good question. Yeah, and I think the answer for the black coming out is that you will be able to use that. Yeah, we'll talk they about have said that. that. Yeah, they have said that. Will be. Yeah, so hopefully that means that that would work for Flint and for uh, the other. Spider G6 says, yes, you can use the coupon. Thank you, Spider. I appreciate you okay. checking for us. Um, okay, anyway, so Flint, if you can use that coupon, you're starting to save a chunk of, of coal. If you think about that, you use that, if you have 168,000 coal right now, you use that, you can get the Flint, and then you can scroll down here and get the hill for 38K rather than just getting Flint at full price, right? We're getting there, Brand. We're working our way up from the bottom, buddy. Oh, no, you're asking where the tier eights are. That is a good question. They don't do tier eights for coal boats. I just noticed that too, and it's funny it to me because me tier. Tier eight has literally like forty thousand premium ships. I know, and none they couldn't of them. just pick one and make it a coal boat. Like, come on. And I wondered for a long time if there's some like credit earning math about that, but they put nines in here and tens now, so like that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me anymore. So because tier eight's that sweet spot for selling premiums where it used to be, right? They knew they could get fifty bucks out yeah. of people for premiums, so they just why make them free? 
Yeah, I think that's part of it, right? There's a profitability to to your tin foil, for sure. tin foil hat crinkling. Yeah, as you put your your conspiracy theory hat on, <laughs> we're deep in the speculation zone. All right, we've got a, a several more boats to go. Palmer, Scott, I'm going to let you talk about Palmer. I know you like this boat too. Yeah, I really like Palmer when it came out. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's a tier nine premium Frederick de Grossa with smaller turret caliber. It has 12 380s as opposed to the uh, 406s or the 420s that you get on FDG. Um, Palmer does, has hydros, which is rad. It also has torpedoes, which is fun. Its secondary armament is a mixture of 128s and 105s that all have German quarter pen. So back when this first came out, it, I monstered all over 3v3 brawls with it, um, building into <laughs> IFHE. It was so good. Um, I think it's less good now. Um, I think there's, as with most things, as time goes on, but I still think if you like German a battleship play, I think Pomeran's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Pomeran is fun. I, I think you're right that it's not as strong as it used to be. Um, the, uh, the, the boat is a lot of fun, though. I got it a little bit late. You know, I didn't grab this one right away. I tend to lean more towards destroyers and things of that nature. So, you know, my coal was dedicated elsewhere. Eventually, I did get Pomeran. Um, I haven't had as many amazing games in it as some players have, uh, but I, I will say that I really like those 380s. I think the 380s are a lot of fun um, for uh, uh, for getting work done on cruisers with the, as easy as it is to overpen stuff these days. Um, so that's a that's kind of a that's kind of a tricky thing, I guess, is finding the right caliber for the ships you're going to be up against when you really don't know what you're going to be up against. But I kind of like the 380s for that. Um, so yeah, that, that's Palmern for sure. The the torpedoes are kind of a hoot. Uh, the trouble with Palmern now is the battle cruisers are out. The the Brit, the German split and some of those tech line boats at tier eight, tier nine, tier ten. Well, at least the two, seven, nine, and ten are really, really great. They have longer torpedoes. They have just as good or better uh, acoustics. They have just as good or better guns and secondaries. It's it's a little bit crept by the release of that tech line. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to add to that part of the conversation, Scott. But... Oh yeah, Eler pointed out I was wrong. They have, it has 150 oh, millimeter and 105 millimeter uh, secondaries. Anyway, the 105s are why you'd take IFHE on it, or at least you used to, because then they can pen 32 millimeter, which was a big deal when you were fighting bunch of tier nine battleships that have 32 millimeter bows you just eat them up um i still think palmer's a lot of fun and if you want you know there's other options now that grocer curve first is here as a coal ship but um and now that tier nine matchmaking is deficient and not what it was a month ago um but i i still think and, and again the 380s sometimes something to be said uh for having a little bit smaller battleship gun so you don't constantly get over pens on cruisers which you see a lot on the larger battleship guns mm-hmm Downside is, is this one of the first ships I can remember where they balanced main gun DPM with making the reload uh, over 30 seconds. Main main battery reload on it is longer than 30 seconds, which I hate. Um, we started to see that more and more uh, back in like 2019, uh, 2020 on battleship development. If it had eight guns, you could reload under 30 seconds. But if it had more than that, they started pushing the reloads over 30 uh, yeah. because it's a cheap and lazy way to balance the gun DPM. It is the most boring way to balance gun DPM. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, hey, uh, Morbid, thanks for the follow, bud. Glad to have you join us. Um, okay, so we'll bounce off of this one. That was Parman. We had a question from um, Salty Sea Dogs asked about the coal commanders. Um, if you will hang on, we're, when we get done with the ships, we can talk briefly about the coal commanders. I'm not as expert on those, but if Scott is willing to stick around, we can chat about those a little bit too and see if uh, between the two of us in chat, we will have a few opinions. Yeah, um, we can do that. Just make a make a mental break so you can cut it into a different video for YouTube. <laughs> that's exactly what we'll do. <laughs> um, so we'll talk Marco Polo. Now, Marco Polo, I got out of like a Christmas box or something. I can't remember. Or a super container. I don't know. I got Marco Polo for free. I was lucky to not have to spend coal on it. Uh, well, free. If I bought a Christmas box, I didn't get it for free. But um, Italian Battleship, uh, it runs sap shells and AP shells, but I think, and, and no HEs. Says she has more accurate guns. She does not have the smoke that is, you know, kind of the signature piece of the Italian battleship line. So that is something I find a little bit odd with this ship. I don't know if I recommend Marco Polo strongly. I, I will say I've played just a handful of games, two or three matches probably. And then, um, and I've had good games in it, but to me, I'm like, I guess I'm playing a battleship. The sap didn't really seem 
super special to me. Maybe I'm wrong on that, Scott. Am I am I doing Marco Polo wrong? Probably. What do you think? Um, I don't like this ship. Uh, it's it, uh, so that's my personal take on it. I've <laughs> I've been mad about this ship, especially ever since they announced Giuseppe Verde, which is like the same ship but with better features, in my opinion. So Marco Polo's gimmick is that it it has big guns, right? It has like four oh sixes. And even Caristoforo Colombo only has 380s, right? So they're like, oh, you got bigger guns. Yeah, and that's true. It's got these big sap shells. And so, like, if you land them right and you're comfortable with playing um, Italian battleships and the way their guns work, uh, you can do, you can get work done in it. But it's hard to, for me, it's hard to quantify as anything. I mean, it's a captain trainer for Italian ships, but it's hard to quantify as something that would get you used to the line um, because it doesn't have the smoke gimmick. Mm. Um, it yeah, plays different. You, you just play it differently. You play it more traditionally. I always, um, I always bemoan the fact that it doesn't have HE because on a like on Roma, which is a tier eight premium uh, Italian battleship, I use the HE um, a fair amount um, to effect. And so, not having that on Marco Polo, especially when the sap on Italian battleships is damage limited versus destroyers, makes right. this makes it hard to counter uh, DDs with these guns. Even if you get a good barrage into them, they don't take. They don't feel. It doesn't feel like it hits them as hard because that's limited by the game. So, um, yeah, this is one. This is one that I would. It would be further down on my list to acquire. Yeah, I, I think it would be for me too. But again, I'm. You know, I tend to, to lean towards non battleship picks anyway. Like I said, I've had good games in it. Most of my games in Marco Polo have been reasonable. We haven't won them all, but I've had. You know, for me, good performing games. Um, funny you mentioned Roma, or maybe not funny, but interesting you mentioned Roma because it's just toast in chat comments. Marco is a tanky boat. Kind of feels like a big Roma. But of course, missing the HE, right? He didn't say that part. I'm adding that. But um, and I think it does kind of feel to me when I'm driving around like it's a big Roma. Um, interestingly, I really like the Roma quite a bit, actually. And Marco, I just have more of a neutral opinion on. I think it's fine, but it isn't like a oh, bye bye bye, rush out and get it right now. But yeah, and this is a this is a carbon copy of the Tech Tree Tier Nine hull, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, Marco Polo, Giuseppe Verde, and the name of the Tier 9 Tech Tree ship escapes me right now. The difference is the Tier 9 Tech Tree boat has like the 380s uh, with SAP yeah. and AP, has the smoke. Um, so I'd probably rather play it uh, than Marco Polo. I just, I just, uh, I'm just not a huge fan of this boat. Yeah. And those 406s are going to do you, you know, they're going to do you a little bit more pen, a millimeter or two, I think, probably two millimeters more than what you get with the 380s. So it's not a huge deal, but it'll it'll help in some ways. Hey, G-Max here, what's up, man? Um, okay, let's see. Are there One that's in my list that I know you don't have, so you haven't covered it yet, but on my list before Polo is at 44. I don't know if you want to wait and cover the ones you don't have when you get to those. I don't know no, I was just scrolling up to see if I'd skipped any other nines, and it looks like yeah. I have. So do you, why don't you start us off with Z44 since you own it? Z44 is a tier nine German destroyer. Uh, this is a boat that isn't super popular. I'm one of the few people I know that likes it. It's um, it's a torpedo focused destroyer. It was one of the first premium uh, German destroyers that uh, didn't have hydros, right? People are used yeah. to the German destroyer mainline having hydros. This ship does not. But the ship has our two by five, I think, torpedo racks that shoot 12 kilometer torpedoes that reload relatively quickly. Um, Look like five. So, yeah. yeah so I, I like the amount of torpedoes it can put in the water. Um, it still has four or five guns, single gun turrets, but the reload and rotation on them are are meh. So it's truly, in my opinion, not it's not a hybrid. I, I wouldn't play this wanting to use the guns that much. It's more of a torpedo boat when I play it. Um, that said, I like this boat, but I don't think it's exceptionally special. Um, but I think if you're looking again for a for a trainer for uh, German captains, if you're a destroyer player and you like torpedo boat play, um, I think Z44 uh, scratches that itch. Yeah, this is one, obviously, you know, I don't have it in my port yet. So I've kind of set this one aside for a little while. I think I will get it. And I do like torpedo boats as well. Um, so I will probably wind up getting it. My the reason I've had a hard time uh, making pulling the trigger, making this my next boat is that other boats have come out or tier tens have come out. And I tend to favor higher tier boats just because those tend to be worth more at snowflake season time. And sometimes we can use them in competitive modes, things like that. I don't know that we always take coal boats into competitive modes, but I think Z44 is, is as you said, I think um, what I've read and what I've heard from others is it's a good boat, but it's not exceptional 
in any real way that makes makes it a, a must get boat. So you know, I think if if you're sitting there looking at Z44 going, eh, I don't know, then then hold off. There's lots of other boats to pick out. If you think, hey, I like a torpedo boat, and I I have a lot of great German ships, and I can use this to level my captains, go for it. Um, I think uh, it could be a reasonable pick for that. Uh, do you want to go to Carnot next? I'm gonna have you talk about this one too because I know sure. you like Carnot. Carnot, um, <clears throat> Carnot kind of grew on me. It's a it's a large uh, French tier nine cruiser. It's very big. It looks like a cruise ship. It's a nine gun uh, like ship. ship. I think the guns are what, like 305s? I'd have to. Uh, they are 305s. It says here on in it. the article. Yeah. Um, reload on it's nothing to write home about. I think the reload's a sub 20, but it's not uh, great. Uh, you could equip standard French cruisery stuff like defensive AA or hydros or speed boost or, or spotter plane. Um, so speed boost and uh, hydros usually. Uh, it's got a normal heal. I like I like Carno. Um, I've had good matches in Carno, but it is a large ship and it's kind of a weird play style. It does not have torpedoes. Mm -hmm. um, it. Um, I can't talk a ton about the new French cruisers that are coming out next month because of my role in the super test. Um, but right. I would I would contend there's some similar DNA. Although if you look up those French cruisers, like in the dev blogs and things where they've been announced and shown off, you'll see that the gun layout's a lot different than what this ship has. Um, but I think there's similar DNA. I think this is kind of the, you know how they do. I think this is kind of the precursor idea for doing a, doing a larger battle cruisery French line. So this boat is probably the French equivalent. I hate to say it's like the French equivalent of Alaska. It's not, but you know what I mean? Like there's the, yeah. the, the tier nine grouping of large cruisers. This is the French version of that. Right. This is, this is the French Azuma. It's um, dangerous I, to say that it's in Alaska, but you can say yeah, it's, it's like not. The French it's it's French Azuma. super cruiser yeah, because it's the French Azuma, right? And, and yeah, <laughs> um, it just, I think it has better armor than Azuma. So, um, but uh, again, right. I don't know that this boat's for everybody. Uh, you have to want to play that kind of mid long range fire spammer, large caliber boat. I use the AG on it a lot. The AP works great. It's got good gun ballistics. Um, but again, I, you don't see a lot of these out there because I feel like there's so many coal boats that have come out in the time frame that this ship came out. And I'm not sure that it really has a it doesn't really it doesn't hasn't grabbed the zeitgeist of the player base. Right. There's not. Yeah, there's not like a big Carno cult following, but um, there, the people I know who have it seem to like it. The people I know who don't have it are worried about other boats, right? They're, they're buying other boats with their coal. They're buying the captains. They're doing something else, right? Um, and I've watched a couple of streamers play it as well. Uh, and they it gen generally gets reasonably good reviews, right? Flat trajectories, 305s, good fire spammer, let's go, right? It's, it seems like a reasonable boat. Again, for me, I've been distracted by buying other boats, so I haven't... I haven't uh, made this one a target yet, um, but will eventually. I think Carnot will wind up in my in my port. Um, I don't know if either of us have Tulsa. Do you have Tulsa? I do. Tulsa is a down tier Des Moines, right? That's the Des Moines at tier uh. nine. So instead of three barrel turrets, we've got two barrel turrets. So does that make it a six gun ship? I think that's what it makes it, right? Uh, it's a six gun cruiser. And yeah. I think it was I think a lot of people pushed it in originally that, oh, it's a down tier Des Moines. It is not a Des Moines hull, though. Um, it's a this is the same hull as Rochester. It's an Oregon City class American cruiser hull, which is only a slightly different than, like, say, Baltimore. Um, I was say, so it looks like Baltimore with the crane on the back. Yeah, the yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the same as it's a Baltimore or Oregon City class. Right. And so it has those rapid fire or rapid fire esque turrets, but you only have six of them. So what you can't do with this is what you can do in Des Moines, which is like stick the nose around an island and bow tank because the bow won't tank like Des Moines or Salem. Um, I find Tulsa to be quasi frustrating. I know other folks like not Odysseus who have it. Really I was going like to say, Odie said, I like Tulsa yeah, in chat. Yeah, he really right? likes that boat. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had like an epic game in it yet, but that's probably a lot to do with matchmaking at tier nine. I'd, if I got to play it against a glut of sevens, I'd probably be really stoked. It just hasn't happened for me. Right. Yeah. Now I think, uh, I think Tulsa is interesting for me. You know, the idea of, more Des Moines at tier nine. I have never really had a good time at Des Moines. That's more about, like you said, it's more about me or matchmaking or something than about the ship. I, Cause I know that Des Moines is a strong boat. So for me, this one is not a strong sales pitch, but th there are, are uh, just uh, just an absolute monster myriad of Des Moines fans out there who would probably have a good time with this boat, even if it's not quite a, uh, 
a Des Moines hole at that point yeah. here. You know? What I would throw out and looking at the list and boats we've covered, mm. this is the first coal boat we've covered that has radar. Um, oh, true. So that's something to be said for that. Right. So if you're if you, there's a lot of times when you can play in competitive modes um, in tier nines um, it, and it, it may be interesting to folks, the radar on it, I think the radar range is light cruiser esque. I feel like it's a nine kilometer radar. Um, it's not 10, but um, it is the first coal boat that we've covered that actually has radar. As far as I can tell, I don't think anything we've talked about prior to does. I, and so there's, I think you're right. Yeah. So there's something to be said for that, having that capability. Um, if you don't have a radar cruiser in your port mm -hmm. um, and for some reason you want a tier nine and not a tier 10, then there's Tulsa. <laughs> well, so GMAC here in chat says, if you have coal, just get Salem. Or if you have the coal for Tulsa, just get Salem. And we'll talk about Salem here in a second. Um, uh, because that's or Moscow. Kind of pretty soon. <laughs> Moscow. Yeah, we've got other boats to talk about at tier 10, <laughs> right? But right now we're into tier nines. Uh, Odie says nine kilometer radar with a 9.5 kilometer detect on Tulsa. Yeah, uh, she is sneaky. Uh, so that's pretty that cool. Is a nice, it is a nice feature. And her AA isn't terrible, but like, yeah, you know, I'm sure I hate fine. commenting. I hate commenting on AA values because it's always kind of a moot point. It feels weird. It, yeah. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time talking about it, anti-air. Okay, so that's Tulsa. We've also got Kearsarge up here. So Kearsarge, of course, uh, the apartment block on the water, as we called it for a couple of weeks when it first came out. Kearsarge is a hybrid battleship, tier nine uh, with, uh, I think, North Carolina, North Carolina's gun layout, except for 12 guns instead of just nine. And then, of course, the ability to launch some, some squadrons off the top of it. Now, I am not a Kearsarge expert. This is a boat that you've played, though, Scott. I, you know, initial takes on Kearsarge. What makes it special? What makes it fun? I like Kearsarge it's because it's kind of weird. Um, it's yeah. not the best tier nine battleship by any means, but um, it's guns, you know, even though it has North Carolina guns at tier nine, that's fine. Those guns are great. And having having 12 uh, barrels, even though the reload, again, this is a ship where the balancing of the guns has pushed the reload over my personal threshold of desirements. But um, right. the gun angles are good considering there's a flight deck in the middle of the battleship. Yeah, um, this, this hard cut that we've got here allows those guns to yeah, barely yeah, the, forward, doesn't it? The guns work. So like if, if you just leave out the gimmick of the of the planes, it's a pretty good tier nine battleship in regards to the way the guns work. Right. Um, the guns uh, do good damage. They work just fine at tier nine. Um, the ship's armor layout, if you again leave out that weird flight deck, isn't terrible. Um, you know, we were fighting one last night, and of course, if you fight them, you know, you want to aim into the sides of that flight deck because it's just all counts as like superstructure and it takes pens all day long. So that's a downside of the ship. Right. But played played at ranges. It has relatively long range for the guns. And then again, you have the gimmick of the flight. So if you think it's fun, you can launch fighter planes. These are equivalent to like midway rocket planes. I think the the the, the flight is smaller. They launch tiny Tims. Um, which are uh, pretty penetrative HE rockets. Yeah. So you can get really, if, if you're comfortable using rocket planes, uh, you can do really good damage with those as well and spot for yourself and do kind of fun gimmicky things. Um, again, this is a ship though that if you're if you're getting your first coal boat and you've saved up this far, I'm not sure that this is a great my first coal boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is a well, I've, I've got everything else I want. And that looks weird and interesting, but that like that's kind of in my take on it. Um, it's just Toast has a comment here. He says, it's kind of a squishy, or, I'm paraphrasing, it's kind of a squishy boat with strong airplanes. The guns are pretty accurate and hit hard. Um, and the HE is also pretty good. It's got a big citadel, but again, it was just so squishy. Uh, so if I'm not paying attention when I'm in flight, then there can be trouble. Uh, again, paraphrasing some of what it's just said. Agreed. Uh, I think you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to keep your your SA your situational awareness up when you're running those airplanes around to make sure that your plane your ship is not going to be vulnerable. That's true for any of these hybrids. It's really a kind of an interesting skill that we don't see on nine non hybrid ships, where you're going to leave your ship for a while, but you still have guns to concern about. You have rotation to concern about. You have got incoming fire to concern yourself with. Um. 
GMAX says, if you're going to introduce a whole line that has special features, maybe put that feature in your ship. <laughs> Going back to some comments from Matt Big Data earlier. That's pretty great. And yes, Bowmaster Clyde likes weird ships. So anyway, that's Kearsarge. And now we're back down here to, tar to start talking about our tier 10s. So Forrest Sherman is a uh, SAP powered HE or SAP powered American destroyer uh, that came out here just a, just a few months ago. Um, for Sherman is an interesting boat. It's only three turrets, but the reload is twice as fast as gearing. So when you're running HE, you have the same DPM as the USS gearing. When you're running SAP, of course, you're going to get increased pen and you could get, uh, of course, a lot more damage when SAP is the appropriate armament, but don't ignore the HE. I think Forrest Sherman's kind of a fun boat. Um, it's got very, very almost near useless torpedo angles. I think I've landed one torpedo in it in my entire life. Um, I think some people have had better, better luck than that, but, um, the, the Fort Sherman was originally balanced to have some uh, homing torpedoes, and they decided that wasn't a thing uh, for non-submarines, so they took them away. Uh, but I think Fort Sherman is fun. Um, I don't know how applicable it is for competitive modes, uh, but but I think it's a fun ship, and I love the, the DPM. It's super annoying when you're being shot by a Fort Sherman in a heavy ship, like a heavy cruiser or a battleship. So, you know, maybe don't troll people with it. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely farm, farm, farm away. That's what she's all about. Scotta, now that we've had it for a few months, what is, what's your take on Forrest Sherman? Yeah, I haven't played it a lot, um, but I, I appreciate what it what it's capable of. It's, uh, um, you know, I'm, you know, me as far as destroyer play goes, I prefer torpedo based boats. But even with the gunboat DDs that I'm good at, um, something about Forrest Sherman doesn't really work for me. Um, that said, uh, his, I like the I like the class of ship. I like that it's an actual ship. I like that it's a historical ship in that regard. Um, I like that um, they did an Anchors Away event on the Turner Joy uh, in Bremerton, Washington, which is the same class. And yeah. so it's a real it's a real ship, and it's not a paper ship, right? Um, and as far as like more of a Cold War uh, kind of ship goes, I think it's kind of a cool ship. Um, I think the SAP is fine. You know, proliferation of SAP and small calibers to American ships has been happening. This is a, you know, half an Austin's worth of SAP guns kind of thing, or maybe less than half. But um, it, it, it's an interesting ship and it, it can do a lot of gun damage if you're comfortable with the workings of it. Yeah, agreed. And for Sherman, you know, people go, oh, for Sherman, it's that gunboat destroyer. It doesn't really feel like any of the boats I would call gunboat destroyers. Forrest Sherman's not fast. It's not a run and gun. It's uh, it feels more like a cruiser, really, where you find an island, you nestle up against it and you keep your guns rolling. Whereas other gunboat destroyers, I would think of as being more like action gunboat destroyers where you're moving and you're you're using speed and stealth to, or you know, kind of a mix of speed and stealth to um, help you get the job done. You know, if you're looking for a gunboat DD comparison, it's Herbie Gumbo. Yeah, yeah, Herbie Gumbo, which is our nickname for the Haragumo. Um, it is much more like that, which is a much more stationary gunboat, isn't it? That, that's probably a fair comparison. Yeah, it I plays to, like that. Yeah. I wanted to we missed Neustra, by the way. Uh, we will get it. You're right, though, we did. Um, I just wanted to show the blue camo for, uh, for Sherman, uh, because this is the alternative color. So if you don't like the boring gray uh, paint scheme that it comes with, you can do this one as well. We totally missed Neustra Shimi. How did I do that? Because it costs more than anything else, so it's at the top of the list. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, that's true. Not sorted by tier, sorted by dollars or credit or coals. Uh, New Strashimi. So, New Strashimi is a uh, premium Russian destroyer. It's one of the Steel Legends, originally only available for steel. So, when it came over, it's almost 300,000 coal. Uh, keeping this in mind, that's what we're going to pay for the future um, USS Black when it returns back to the ship, uh, to, the, to the game as well. And Wargaming basically said it's going to cost about what uh, Neustra costs. Neustra Shimi is basically a two turret uh, a two turret destroyer. The turrets look and act similar to those on the Grozovoy. So if you're familiar with that, that's what it's like. But un unlike Grozovoy, it's only got two turrets instead of three. Uh, so the, the HE and the AP guns are good, um, or shells, I should say, are good. But uh, the reload being like five seconds base before you start modifying it, it means that it doesn't have incredible DPM. Uh, what it does have is a super heal. And the super heal is nice, but it's kind of hard to use uh, because destroyers, it's really easy to take large chunks of damage. Knowing when to use your super heal is really tricky. If you don't use it early enough, the next salvo could delete you. And so if you use it now, you might not get maximum benefit 
it out of that superhero. So I find that to be kind of a difficult uh, gimmick to use on a destroyer, um, but it is kind of uh, worth doing. Uh, or worth having on the ship, I suppose. Uh, the torpedoes are 10 kilometers and they can be used to good effect because this is a very low detect ship. I think it's like 5.6 kilometers. I can go check real quick while Scotty gives his thoughts. What do you think about uh, Neustra and, and kind of how she plays uh, for as much coal as she costs and what kind of player would benefit from Neustra? I think when I got Neustra was when I was, you know, I, my play for the game, I, I got to a point where I was like, okay, now I'm going to play Destroyers. And so I think I had Neustra like while I was kind of doing that. It may have been one of the more high tier Russian Destroyers I had for a while because I didn't do those lines for a while. But yeah, um, I like, I consider Neustra to be a torp boat. Um, the gun, I don't, the guns I are usable. Too. The guns are more usable than like Z44, um, but you only have two of them and like the reload's not epic. The, the things I the thing I don't like about it as a torp boat is I feel like the torpedoes take a long time to reload. Um, they do, yeah. And so that's frustrating. And that you know the mega heals pretty neat. Uh, its concealment is really good. Um, you know this is a ship that is good at getting caps. It's good at um, you know it's good at getting spotted and running away because like the concealment's good. And then you can if you get hit, you yeah. can you know cook off one of those heals. Um, the torpedo range is fine because of that great concealment, but it, I know it, I always get frustrated by how long the torpedo reload is on a on what I consider a torpedo boat. It frustrates me in that. Yeah, it's also really expensive. It's really expensive. The torpedo reload is over a minute and a half in my configuration, and I have improved it. So it's uh, it's about uh, 96 seconds, 96 point something. Um, and I, again, I think it's a strong boat at with its concealment i think it's a strong boat with its torpedoes the guns are fine but you're not going to like farm down something you really want that third turret to get that done um, neustra is fun um and i think it's good to have but boy is it expensive so if one, you can use a yeah, coupon on it go ahead and do it but i was gonna say one other comment too when we talk about these things as trainers uh, i don't like you're obviously it's not a great trainer for no, the gun it's boat line config, and like, it's not really a great config for for the uh, for the Grozovoy side either because I know my Grozovoy captain is built more hybrid because the guns are so great and so yeah. um, I know like in my port I have uh, I, th I believe my captain for it is like uh, oven chicken because he can I think he's like my Benham and Neustra captain because he yeah. can do both countries and he's torpedo biased and so I don't I think if you build it you, you kind of have to have like a real heavy torpedo build captain uh, for this that I don't think is great for the destroyer lines so uh you know this might be one where if you've got like a like a petro captain or a, a or a nevsky captain they 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 go over and they work on neustra in a, in a build that doesn't really work on on the other destroyer lines that, that russia provides yeah that's a good point i think i lazily run my grozovoy captain on there but it is not optimized because grozovoy is built health healthily for guns so because neustra is as different as you're describing um, using a cruiser or battleship captain on this premium with a custom DD build is probably smart. Um, yeah. Alternatively, of course, you can grind a whole nother captain, but as we know on this channel, because we talk about it constantly, because I never shut up about it, that's like 3 million more captain XP you gotta grind every time you add a captain to your roster. So it's best if you can recycle, like you suggested, your Petro captain or your battleship captain or something. Now you've got a CV captain as well that you could borrow. Um, and as long as you don't have other unique ships that you also need to do that for. So now, good point. And I'm glad you made me uh, go back and catch this one. I totally skipped it. Uh, okay. Uh, Marceau, Marceau. Uh, we like Marceau. I think both of us like Marceau. Uh, Marceau's got uh, smaller guns. They're 127s than the Kleber. Um, she's fast like Kleber. She's got longer range torpedoes than Kleber. Um, and, and still has the speed boost as well as the Turbo AA um, on there. The, the thing that Marceau doesn't have that Kleber has is flatter gun arcs. They're a little bit higher and, and longer, but it reloads much faster. Um, I find that when I'm trying to play a tier 10 French destroyer, I reach for Kleber, uh, but I got Marceau first and I used Marceau to help me grind my captains and stuff to, to get them ready for when we got to tier 10. I still like Marceau, I think it's a good boat. And because Kleber gets banned in competitive events, Marceau still makes an appearance. Uh, it, for some clans and some teams. Um, so I think Marceau's probably worth having for some of those reasons. But I, I will say when I'm gonna go play in randoms, I tend to lean towards Kleber myself. So uh, it kind of, your mileage may vary, but I do think she's a good boat. Tater Dog says, bye. Salty Sea Dog says, the shells are loopy. 
Toast says, great at farming, difficult to aim those slower shells. Scott, where do you land on that spectrum? Kind of thinking about yeah, that. A lot of the same opinions. Colbert's guns, or, or Marceau's guns are the same guns as Colbert, right? So they're they're these like high arcing, fiery 127s or 128s or whatever they are. So that's one gimmick you can do with it is you can like do like over shots islands. over islands that yeah. you can't do with Colbert. But um, I reach for Colbert first a lot of the time also because of uh, the torpedo reload on Kleber is so much faster. Marceau's torpedo reload is kind of punitively slow. Um, mm. And that's another one of those things that agitates me like battleship gun reload, right? Um, and so so that's one thing I like better about Kleber. The guns on Kleber are more manageable. I, I, I think Marceau's really great though. So um, I, I, I do like Marceau. I've had Marceau longer than I had Kleber, kind of like you. Um, yeah. And I've had great games in it, and it also has pretty good um, AA because its guns are those like multi-purpose guns. Like um, yeah, I've had, purpose. I've had a good time fending off uh, feisty carriers with it, especially because it's so maneuverable and fast. Um, it's a good boat. Yeah, I grabbed the torpedo reload. Here is 142 seconds. So that's two minutes, 22 seconds between launches. Um, one of the ways that that is mitigated is that there are four torpedo launchers on the deck. So you can do a left side launch and a right side launch. But yeah, it's over two minutes to get the, to get the fish back in the tubes. So I think yeah. they go like a click further. I think they go they like do. a they click go further than Kleber. Eight than Kleber. Yeah. Eights are the, Kleber. The reload on them just always grates on me, especially at the beginning of matches, um, just because you're like, you're so fast that you're forward where you can be and the torps are still reloading. It's like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of that where if I'm not paying attention, and this is not just in Kleber and Marceau, um, I'll be I'll be to the place where I want to launch the torps before the torps are reloaded, and I'll still step out of the in, out from behind my cover. And I've got a 25 second wait. And I'm like, well, now I'm out here dancing in the in the wind. I'm going to die. And, you know, faster torpedo reload boats help you um, in that scenario a little bit, whereas these slower ones will cause that scenario, unfortunately. So anyway, uh, Marceau is pretty good. Um, definitely a recommended boat. I think it's fun. Uh, but again, uh, thinking about your priorities as an individual player is going to help you make uh, the choice about whether or not this is the one you want to grab right away or, or hold off on a little bit later. Let me come back in here. I, I went out to show the, show the fine people a nice picture of the boat. When I own the boat, it doesn't let me do the preview in port, so I wasn't able to do that as easily for that one. After Marceau, we come to Salem. Salem's one of the oldest coal boats in the game. It's got a short range but long duration radar. It's basically similar in hull and guns uh, to Des Moines. Um, and so we can take a look at Des Moines and kind of realize that Salem's kind of similar. Um, the shorter range radar, I, I don't remember how much shorter it is, but it's very short. Um, and then it does have an option to swap that for acoustics. You'll probably want to run the radar. Uh, it does have a super heel, which Des Moines does not have. Um, and I know, you know, there are folks who will run Salem in ranked battles because of that super heel. They'll be more aggro. They'll push up closer to islands. Um, Toast says it's an eight and a half kilometer radar range. Thanks, Toast. Um, they'll push up closer to islands because they know they can use the super heel to survive. They can use the tanky bow in armor to survive. They can use the radar to light up their enemies and they can use the fast shooting guns to shoot up their enemies. But I think there's also a counterpoint to that, which is just take Des Moines. Why wouldn't you just take Des Moines and deal with a normal radar or normal heel, but a better radar? Yeah, like you said, I, the, the things that it's a deficit in from Des Moines, uh, the radar range and not being able to equip hydros are things Moines, I don't want. You can do both. You can do hydro and radar. Yep. yep. Yeah, and you can't on Salem. Salem doesn't even have hydros. Um, or if it does, they're switchable with radar. I don't remember. You gotta, but, you gotta swap them. Yeah, radar. yeah. On, on, on Des Moines, you run both, right? And so, or you can. And so I always find that frustrating. Um, on Salem, yeah. it's one of those things where if you have, if you're a Des Moines guy and you have a Des Moines and you're like, oh, I, like I have Salem and I have my Salem set up differently than my Des Moines because of that. Like, yeah, I run a more of an AA centric uh, range. I think I actually have range mod in slot six instead of reload, so so I can do some different things with Salem than I can uh, with mm -hmm. Des Moines. Um, but um, if if you have Des Moines or if you're working that tech line, it's a, it's a it's a good trainer for British or for American cruiser captains. Um, but um, it's, uh, you know, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's okay. It is, I, you know, I don't yeah. dislike it. 
I will say that, uh, and you know, you know, Scott and I are pretty average players, right? We want to make sure we advertise that at least once in every YouTube video. We're pretty average players, both of us. Um, and I will say that, you know, the the higher your skill is as a player, and this is a question for you to answer on your own time for yourself, but the higher skill you are as a player, the more you're able to exploit the differences between these two ships, and reap the benefits without dealing with the negatives of these ships because you've you've got that ability to employ that super heal and not worry as much about the cost of the other things right so it's one of those things that you you, you know once you know your abilities and you can lean in on that stuff um, you'll be able to to figure out okay how can i use these differences without suffering from those other differences um, and again some players can just do that better than others i think for a lot of players salem and des moines are kind of the same and i already have a des moines why would i get a salem right and that's fine too um, but that's not going to be for everybody anyway so that's salem um, long in the tooth been in the been in the list for a long time Next up is Khabarovsk. Khabarovsk was a tech tree ship that recently moved to the uh, moved to the coal ship list here. Uh, Kaba's very unique in play style. That's one thing that makes Kaba kind of interesting is if you like the idea of a, a ship that kind of plays differently from all the other ships in the uh, uh, Russian line, Kaba's just more unique than some. It's not totally unique. I mean, it's not totally different from Tashkent, but it's an eight gun destroyer, um, hull repair, short range torpedoes, very tanky, uh, and it can be a lot of fun. It's not a boat for everybody, but if you like uh, gunboats, um, go for it. Toast says Delny is better, but it's funny to, that he says that, and I'll, I'll counterpoint slightly, which with uh, Delny has like half the DPM that Kaba has, and I know Toast likes DPM because he's been talking about it all day. Um, but uh, Delny does have some advantages. One of the big advantages that Delny has, which is our new tech tree replacement, is the rudder shift is much better, um, and it is able to dodge incoming fire, and it does have, I think, maybe better range when you max out the range. So Delny has some reasons that uh, she's going to exceed the Kaba. Uh, DPM is not one of them, though. So if you're comfortable playing in the ranges and with the bad rudder shift, because Kaba's rudder shift is abysmal, um, you'll do more damage with Kaba. But um, Delny's probably more serviceable in more situations uh, than uh, than Kaba is. Oh, you're not wrong, Toast. I think it's just opinions. We're just playing opinions. Um, Skada is back. Um, Skada, I know you're a huge Kabarovsk fan. Why don't you Why don't you tell us about it? I. Um... That's a little sarcasm. Yeah. I like the idea. Well, no, I mean like uh, Kabra. <laughs> so my here, my big story on Kabarask. If you're, if you hear people talk up that are Kaba players that had oh, Kaba when important. it was the, I think I know you're the top of the tech tree, and they're like, yeah, Kaba's great. I like Kaba. And you're playing through Tashkent, and you're like, yeah, Kaba would be pretty cool. And so that was my experience. I was finished. That was the last destroyer line I played through. I because I'm not a fan. And so I was like, okay, we've got all this Tashkent stuff. And then they're like, we're replacing Kaba with Delny. Kaba is going to be a coal boat. So I made sure to research Kaba before it became a coal boat. And then I got Kaba when it finally entered my port uh, because I had it researched. And I went to play it. I'm like, this does not play at all the way that it plays for Clyde. What the heck is going on here? The gun range is abysmal. <laughs> this is a good story. And that, and that's when Clyde's like, oh, well, you know, it's, you got to run the legendary module for this thing to be worth a crap. Uh, yeah. So... So, hey, folks, if you if you if you're like, I'm going to get me that Kabarovs and have a great old time and you go out and get one for coal. I hope you also have whatever, 25,000 research points so you can slap a legendary module on it so that it actually has decent gun range. Because I think without the legendary module, the gun range is abysmal. This is uh, critical. And, and that's my it, it's way worse than Tashkent gun range wise. There's like nothing you can do about it if you don't have that legendary module. It's been balanced around it over the years. So, yep. uh Yuck. No, that's a really good point, a uh, huge point. And I often forget about it, so I'm super glad you brought it up, dude. If you have the Kaba, the range is 13.5 kilometers without the legendary mod. If you put the legendary mod on there, which used to be free and now costs research points, you can uh, you can get that mod or the range out to 14.8. And you want it at 14.8. Kaba is not very much fun at 13.5. So if, if you guys are looking at this uh, and you're not really willing to invest the research bureau points, it might be worthwhile to move on and do what Toast recommends. Just get Delny and have a fun time with Delny. Because you can get some similar play style with Delny. Um, but again, just less DPM. Yeah, um, my favorite I, my favorite thing about my Kabarask is I happen to have the Transformers camo for oh, it. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. I... Uh, I like to put that on it and go into a co-op and go, that's fun looking. Uh, but I don't, I, I have not found much use for this ship because that, that gun range stinks without that legendary mod. 
I do have uh, a video where I compare and contrast um, all of the, I don't know if Bowmaster already shared this, but I just threw it in there. That video I just dropped in chat is um, uh, basically a comparison of Grozovoy, Kaba, and Delny, uh, including both legendary build and non-legendary build mods uh, for the Grozovoy and Kaba. And I go through and we break down the whole thing, we compare the ships. Um, and the winner might surprise you, um, <laughs> or it might not. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great video. I like yeah. that video. Do you? Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, it's a good video. I think I think it's useful at least. So if you guys are in, if you're kind of curious about Delny versus Kaba versus Grozovoy, um, I think that's a. Uh, I wanted to put together something that would help people to kind of you know break down the stats and understand which boat is most powerful. It, this is a this is a, a play style and line though that you're also super passionate about. So yeah, like passionate about. that's what makes it a good video because like you have this this uh, crush on these Russian gunboats. So <laughs> it's cool. It, yeah, that's a good one for you to. To yeah, make. it's a great video. I recommend it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I do. I do really like that play style. So for me, understanding the difference in those boats was really important. And uh, apparently that comes through in the video. Um, let's see. Uh, Tater Dog says he did the same thing as well. That's cool. Um, we'll roll over to Moskva next. So Moskva, former tech tree uh, ship as well. Um, also moved to the coal, uh, to the old coal list, um, replaced with Petropavlovsk, which we know um, is quite powerful and, in fact, uh, powerful enough to recently get a couple of nerfs as well. Uh, Moskva has a 12 kilometer radar. It's got acoustics optionally or uh, turbo AA, so you can swap it for the acoustics module if you'd like. And then, of course, we've got a whole repair on the Moskva as well. Definitely uh, full featured heavy cruiser. Uh, 220 millimeter guns, I believe. Uh, yeah, 220 millimeter guns on this one. Uh, the side is very citadelable, so you cannot leave your side unprotected. Um, but uh, definitely a powerful boat. Reload can get down around nine seconds as well. With 220s, that's pretty fast uh, DPM. So I tend to think of Moskva as a little bit better at you know deleting destroyers using its radar um, unsupported than say something like Stalingrad, which has a much longer reload time. Um, and uh, both of them have similarly short duration radars. Um, Moskva, thoughts from Skata. What do you think, man? Member of the fabled Iron Curtain, tier 10 for Russian cruisers. Uh, popular uh, still, uh, whenever you play clans at tier 10, you're going to see Moskva. Uh, well, maybe not now if they don't have that one ship per limitation. But um, I, again, I, I, I'm a more of a, I'm a Des Moines guy. I prefer Des Moines over Moskva. We, this is like an, like, I think it's like an age old debate in, um, but oh, Moskva's, it, it a, is. It Moskva's a good ship. I, I, I actually, from for certain things, I like playing Moskva better than I like playing Petro, because I like the guns on Moskva a lot better because of the reload and the turret handling, and uh, the HE. But again, I yeah, want Mos Moskva's guns on Petro's hull, and you almost get those. Like Petro's guns are pretty <laughs> close to Moskva; they're not quite as good. If you had that as a combo, whoo, watch out! Yeah, you're you're describing the uh, tier eleven uh, Petro. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's what you know. Something the will be along those lines. Petro, or actually, that'll probably millimeter. be the tier eleven above Nevsky, right? It'll be the yeah. Petro hull, but with Moskva guns or some silliness, because because the tier eleven Petro would be like Stalingrad guns. Yeah. Yeah. five second reload yeah anyway, it's gonna be three yeah, yeah no I, I think i think mosca as far as a 10 goes it's great it's got nice long range radar the guns are good um again you can't give up sides with it but you, by now right. you should know that about cruisers unless it's, unless you're playing petro you shouldn't be giving up your sides to anybody so remember um, you learned yeah. that in the kirov that we talked about earlier. right yeah <laughs> and that used to be the progression right kirov was the tier five and moscow was the tier 10 yeah. Um, and so, so, but yeah, Moskva, Moskva is a good boat. It's not my, uh, it's not my personal favorite at tier 10, but I, I can, you know, I can play it well enough and I understand the concepts. It's a good boat. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've got a couple of videos, I think that feature Moskva on YouTube. So you guys can check those out if that's, if you want to see some Moskva gameplay and, and stuff. I do have one where I get absolutely slapped by a huge salvo of nine shells from a Des Moines, um, and then we go on to, to do some amazing things. So keep your if you're interested in watching some video of Amasfa getting slapped, I can also provide that service as well. Um, Yoshino comes up next. So, you know, we talked about how there's these super cruisers. Before they had super ships, we talked about super cruisers a lot, right? So Yoshino is kind of like an up-tiered um, 
uh, Azuma, but this one adds torpedoes, which Azuma does not have. Um, and so Yoshino's got 305s. You'll find Yoshino is a, largely an HE spammer. Uh, does a really good job starting fires, things like that. Um, it does not do, uh, in my experience at least, it doesn't really do AP that well. I'm sure somebody is gonna be like, well, I should have dealt somebody with a Yoshino once. And I'll be like, oh, okay, good for you. Um, it's fine. It does have 20 kilometer torpedoes that it can equip, uh, which is kind of like, the, the range on those is a little bit of a false positive. Like, it's it's good, don't get me wrong, but you're gonna do most of your damage with long range HE spam. Um, she gets fires really easily, and you'll get a lot of salvos that are three to 5,000 damage, but you'll you'll carry a lot of those as you go. Uh, Toast says, Yoshino's a good boat, but no carry power, because you just sit back and farm. Agreed. These uh, HE farming boats aren't really gonna carry, but if you pair them with a friend who's really good with AP or a battleship that can slap at range, um, you can be an unstoppable team. It's just, it's very much a support ship that's gonna provide that damage over time as we go. Uh, Frost says, I call it small yammy. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, Yoshino, thoughts, Scott? What do, you, what do you think about Yoshi? Yeah, I think, you know, you, you hit it on the head in regards to what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's a tier yeah. 10 is torpedoes. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I've ever had a very successful game in Yoshino. I may have had one, but every time I think I'm going to go like, hey, I can make this boat work. Map layout doesn't work. Positioning doesn't work. Composition of enemies doesn't work. And um, I find it frustrating. I think there's I think there are tech tree boats that like I know we've talked about this before, like the guns yeah. aren't as big. I'd rather play Zao. I don't um, play Zao too. Honestly. If I want to play, if I want to play the style of play that I think Yoshino represents, I'd rather play Henry. Um, mm. And so I don't. It's not. It's not a. You know, it wouldn't be at the top of my list of tier ten coal boat cruisers to pick up. But uh, if you're into Japanese cruisers, big giant Japanese cruisers that have some gimmicks, um, it's got okay hydros. Um, you know, you can run a spotter plane. You can sit on the eye line and shoot fireballs at people. Um, this might be your boat. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Yoshino's good. I think when you said I'd rather play Zhao, I'm like, I agree. Right? I, I, I'm as effective or more so in Zhao, and it's lower concealment, I think, really helps. Um, uh, bot W. Holland, thanks for the follow. Welcome. Unless you're a robot. In that case, no thank you for the follow. Uh, yeah, Toast says it's a squishy win. Uh, Yoshino's easy to sit at all. It is very, very easy to sit it all. So if you see one out there, go ahead and shoot at it with APs. You'll do just fine. Um, Scott, are you, uh, you'd be probably as good or better than me, probably better than me to talk through Napoli. Why don't you start us off with that one? Uh, Napoli is one of the newer ships on this list at tier 10. It's a heavy cruiser. Again, another super cruiser or heavy heavy cruiser. I'm not sure how we're, how they classify these. Let's say super cruiser at uh, tier 10. Uh, it's uh, The guns aren't as big as, um, as Yoshino's. Uh, I believe the guns on it are like in the two uh, the 254s which is a little bit bigger than uh venezia um the difference here is that you have he and ap shells um as opposed to ap or sap uh napoli also has the gimmick of being a cruiser that you can kind of build into the secondaries on even though they don't let you do secondary build captains for cruisers anymore so and it has sap secondaries that are really accurate uh, they have an accuracy formula baked into them. I think I can't remember if it's the same accuracy formula as the Gin Palace or Massachusetts or Graf Zeppelin, but it's got one of those like better accuracy formulas. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, one one place that Napoli has become prevalent is um, you see it a lot in competitive now as that flanking cruiser because Napoli is relatively quick and it offers those options with the quasi larger AP that can work, but it's HE is decent. Um, it also has relatively long range, slow torps like most Italian cruisers, uh, but it's super tanky. Um, it's armor profile is amazingly good. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it, it can like you can do dumb things in Napoli and get away with it, which is uh, nice. <laughs> it, it, it plays and it's and it's moves through the water. Well, it's relatively fast and it handles well. If you put a rudder module on it, it's really nice. So you can do some interesting stuff with it. Um, so I, I, I like Napoli. I, and again, when we played Napoli in randoms, you know, it's one of those things where like in the first half of the match, you're going to do kind of that some more medium range work. I think I actually have range mod in slot six on my Napoli because I don't feel like the main gun battery range is that great. Um, but it's one of those things where you can find that inflection point in a match a lot of times where you can dive in with it. Mm -hmm. um, you can pop its crawling smoke that it has. And if you have spotting, the secondaries will go berserk and start blapping away at things. And you can dump torps and do kind of silly uh, diving 
I don't want to say Paolo runs, but kind of suicide runs, if you will, where you can do some fun stuff. You might come out the other side alive, but um, I think I think Napoli is a fun ship. And again, it's very popular in uh, competitive is kind of like that that non radar cruiser right now. Yeah, it's definitely filling that role for most of the clans that we see in clan battles and things. Uh, Forrester asks, what build does Scotta play in? And I don't know if you want to go th- over that here or just post a screenshot or something in Discord. But um, uh, Yeah, I can post something in Discord later. I don't uh, have it in front of me, but yeah, no, it's no probably worries. it's probably a pretty normal cruiser build. Uh, I know, like, you know, the two I'd concealment and um, what top grade gunner, because top grade gunner is the the thing that gives you better secondary reload or no better secondary dispersion or range or something on cruiser captains now and main battery reload uh, but there's not a whole lot else you can do i do run the secondary module in slot three because i like the secondaries as a joke um it's main battery dispersion kind of sucks and i probably should run dispersion mod there but um i don't play it in competitive really so i just want that secondary build for fun mm. yeah 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 yeah, we'll we'll try to get a screenshot of the captain build and the modules into into Discord a little bit later, Forrester. And if you uh, if you wind up having questions, you know that's a great place to discuss that. There's more than just Scotta in that Discord who like playing Napoli. Um, I've played it a few times too, and I like it. But I think my build is probably pretty vanilla, right? So uh, somebody who's got more matches in it would probably be able to give a, a really good one. So. Um, but that's Napoli. I think I think both of us would probably easily and readily recommend Napoli to people. It's good in competitive. It's good in randoms, um, and all the things that you talked about. The fact that it's got secondaries. It's got those aggressive torpedo angles too. When you're doing that lean in, that hitting that inflection point and leaning in to do that combat that you were talking about, that that scrap, uh, those torps are going to be able to point. I find the. Forward. I would say one downside. I find the AP to be less than compelling at range um, or in the early parts of the match. I'll use HE a lot more because I just don't feel like the AP will get the job done at, at tier 10 as often. You'd think because it's 254s that it will. Maybe it's dispersion, maybe it's velocity, um, but I always I don't feel like I've ever had that monster Citadel match with Napoli. Yeah, I tend to use HE in mine quite a bit as well. Um, and maybe it's just because angles, maybe it's just because the pen doesn't seem to be there, but uh... That's uh, something to think about. Ross Knight asks if we're going to add a captain or ship build channel in Discord. That's probably not a bad idea, actually. Uh, I don't know that we'll do it right away, but that's something to, to mull over. And uh, we'll kind of watch the traffic there in the next few days and be like, hey, maybe we should add one. We do have a few uh, builds that are pinned in the ship talk channel. It's probably worth checking out as well. Yeah, um, Killer Kato supplies a really great build sheet. Oh, that's and true. We, and we keep that pinned on the Discord. Uh, but he it's a great uh, jumping off point for a lot of knowledge that he good shares resource. with our our shares with uh, your subscribers. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And you can go to the, the Ship Talk channel and check the pins. You'll find it in there um, in the Discord. So definitely recommend uh, looking at Killer Kato's spreadsheet. Um, and there's a there are other resources online as well, right? I always tell people to look at at least two, right? And then you'll find uh, what you need um, that way. Uh, next up is Grossa Kerfurst, another tech tree ship that moved over to be in the uh, in the coal ship list. This happened when they replaced it with Preussen, uh, which came out here just, I don't know, a couple months back. Um, Kerfurst has big guns. I want to say 420s is the larger option. Yeah, 420s over 406s. You can run either set if you'd prefer. Um, big secondary, burnable, farmable Grossa Kerfurst. Uh, she's fun. I, I don't know. I... I, I I have a hard time kind of giving a a strong opinion on this one just because she's been around for so long but she's big tanky she's got a nice turtle back um, great secondaries no torpedoes does have acoustics which is good if you're going to be scrapping with um, destroyers and stuff and, and leaning in like you will with a ship like this over time um, the german battleships have gotten a couple of buffs over the last few years where their accuracy used to be really bad and now it's not too shabby honestly so the curfers can more or less hit what it clicks on um but uh not like a real laser you know laser gun kind of rail gun kind of battleship uh Kerfer's thoughts from you scott where where are you at with this one here especially given the new battle cruisers and stuff that have come into the game and and some of the premium options we have I feel like when Kerfurst was the tier 10 tech tree battleship, that it was the first tier 10 tech tree battleship I got. Mm. Um, I, I'd have to go back through my WoW's stats records, but um, I loved the idea of the German battleship secondary boats. Um, I still I still stand for that. I would not consider myself a wearaboo, uh, but I, I like the right. I like the concept there. But Kerfurst has its drawbacks that I think most players are familiar with it. 
it eats he all day long and twice on sunday it's on it you know you've got to build it you want to build it for secondaries but you also need to make sure you build it for fire prevention it's really not a different build than i would run on Preussen. i probably use the same captain back and forth mm -hmm. um it's it's um it's secondary package uh this is the one where i believe all the secondaries are 128 so you don't build into ife because the 128s with 32 millimeter will pin 32 millimeters due to the quarter pin on german he um right. and so this right. you know it, and if you build into secondaries and they're relatively accurate they're not as accurate as the new german battle cruisers those are truly the secondary monsters um the guns on uh Kerr first are serviceable because you get 12 barrels um I like the I, I almost like the 420 or the even the 406 build. Maybe you can you still do 406s on curve first? Maybe I don't know. It but says you can yeah. here, yeah. If you do four four oh sixes or four twenties, I almost like having twelve cracks at that nut when I shoot if I can shoot all the guns over Preussen's four sixties or four fifty sevens or whatever it gave it with eight guns. Just because eight gun battleships are kind of frustrating when you have the German dispersion. Um so it's kinda nice. Um but you know, I've I've played Kerr first in competitive. We we've, we've had success with it in the past in clans. We saw them a lot in this last clan season when it became available for coal. People were all of a sudden playing it in clans again. Yeah, Kerr um, first was weirdly popular. Yeah. in clans, which it yeah. normally and it is hadn't not, been right. right? <laughs> but it, it's the things yeah. the things that make it suffer weren't available, right? Like there were no carriers and there were no right. Um, there were limitations on what on on ship counts, right? You couldn't have you weren't going to see as many just like all out he spammers and stuff in randoms curve I, I know when i first got smolensk uh, a boat that is, is an he spammer i remember my one of my first matches in smolensk mm -hmm. i got with her or against a curve first because you can right so yeah. so like it is what it is it just eats he it has a huge superstructure um it just gets beat up by that kind of stuff but if you can um if you can get it into the right position early match if you can push up into islands very quickly so that you don't get those cruisers farming you from range then yeah. you can you can then you can start doing things battle. right yeah then you can then you can take fights and if you get you know inside of its secondary ranges and in those mid ranges it's a lot of fun if you keep it rolling um if you have the right scenarios nowadays with submarines and you're probably going to have some kind of super cv over your head i i haven't played curve first in a while because i don't feel like i'm going to get the kind of uh, yeah. scenarios that make it an enjoyable experience well, and, and, you know, Kerr first, you know, we, we had some conversation in here about, you know, well, if you're not going to build it for secondaries, maybe build it for survivability. Well, then why wouldn't you just take Kremlin, you know, with submarines around the acoustics for Kerr first or maybe a feather in its cap, a reason you might lean towards this ship. I don't know that that makes it a Kremlin, you know, like in terms of everything else, it doesn't. But, um, you know, th there are the cool thing about Kerr first is I think there's a lot of discussion in, on it and similar battleships um, because of. The fact that it does have secondaries, does have uh, it does have acoustics, it does have relatively large guns, things like that. Uh, with Preussen here, uh, with Schlieffen here, I think there are reasons to look elsewhere. Those, of course, are both tech tree boats, and you can get this boat probably faster than you can get one of those if you just start saving your coal, even if you're a relatively newer player. Although that might not be true anymore. You can grind a tier 10 line pretty fast these days. Um, so yeah, I, Kerfers, I think is, is, I don't know, it's interesting to discuss, um, definitely has uh, some tools in its toolbox. And if those sound like fun to you, um, then, you know, get out there and have yourself a good time. It uh, looks like we have uh, a couple of robots. Can you get Martin as well, Bowmaster? Sorry about that. Thank you, sir. Top moderator. All right, we're gonna go back, uh, leave Kerfers in, in our wake, and we'll talk about Maxwell Immelman. Uh, Maxwell Immelman is a German aircraft carrier, very fast airplanes, uh, skip bombs. I'm trying to remember what it has in terms of armament. We can go pull this one up in the port. Uh, what do you think about Immelman while I'm getting it on the screen for people, Scott? Uh, yeah, Immelman was the first introduction of skip bomb mechanics that then they brought to the Russian tech tree line. Um, also now on uh, the, the one French carrier has skip bombs. So yeah. Immelman has skip bombers and it has torpedo planes. The planes are fast. Uh, it does really not have fast. rocket planes. Uh, it's basically the same hull as Manfred von Richthofen, if I remember right. Um, if you think that's correct. if you're interested in carriers, this is the only one that's a coal boat. Um, I th personally think they should offer a tier six and a tier eight coal carrier because I think that that might be a way to get people interested in carrier play. But I know nobody wants to hear that. 
Uh, but well, I, I, I like you. I think you're right that the fact they're not serving those players at that lower tier, right? Yeah, uh, it'd be weird if the first tier eight Colbert was a carrier. Everybody would throw a fit. But like, <laughs> I, yeah, I like I like Immelman yeah, though. Funny. I like the ordinance on it. Skip bombers are great fun. Um, it's got two they, good arm, two good yeah. weapons. Like torps are yeah. fun and the skip bombers are fun, honestly. Yeah, downside is that those armaments require attacks to broadsides mostly, especially with the torpedo pattern that the torpedo planes put out. It's not like the Russian tech line where the torpedoes are clumped together. It's more of a standard torpedo drop yeah. where it spreads the torpedoes out. I think it drops four torpedoes. And um, so you you need to come in on the sides of stuff. Um, that said, you can hunt destroyers with skip bombers once you get the hang of it, just dropping them on the one line. I, I do that relatively well at this point in my carrier career. Um, I've played right. Immelman. I don't, I don't have tier 10 tech tree carriers. Uh, I have a couple of premium tier 10 carriers. I've played Immelman in tens and I've done fine in it. Um, but I, you know, right. it's, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting ship. And, and, uh, if you are a carrier person, um, it's the only one you can get for coal. <laughs> At any tier anywhere. What the hell? Yeah. It's that, or you get FDR with steel, uh, there, I don't think there's a research carrier. It's really, you know. Yeah. It's this or FDR, so... Yeah, that's probably true, actually. Let's go look at research points real quick. Ships. Nope, no CVs. Yeah, steel is, I guess, FDR, like you say, but... Well, guys, that is all of the coal boats that are currently in the armory right now for purchase. Uh, we got to talk about each one. This probably was long, even though I'm gonna call this video the quick and dirty rundown. These are not short videos, but I'll put a lot of bookmarks in there. By the time you're seeing this, you already have seen the bookmarks. Um, I think this kind of discussion is entertaining and, and hopefully useful for people every once in a while. Scott, thanks so much for coming and sharing your opinions, man. I appreciate it a ton. No problem, buddy. All right. And now, uh, we will put a little gap in here before we go talk about coal captains. <laughs>